if you need to create a document or PDF based on a form completion, you can easily go from form to document using fill out the latest feature. And you can have that information and the document sync back into your database, CRM, or wherever you store your client records. Check it out. Welcome back to the channel. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Zach Stevenson. I'm a business process and no code consultant. If you need help streamlining or automating any of your business processes, you can visit our, our website, interdevsolutions.com, or you can click the link in the description below to book a free consult. I'm going to be using SmartSuite as my database or CRM. Here I have a list of client records and information, such as their email, phone number, and address. Based on your industry, your use case, you'll probably have additional information stored here. But this is what I'm going to use for this demonstration. So SmartSuite is going to be my database or CRM. If you want to use SmartSuite and don't have an account, you can click the link in the description below to get started. And also I'm going to be using Fillout. Fillout is the form software that we're going to use to obtain information from the client. And it's going to add that information into a PDF or onto a document. And then we can store that information back within our CRM. If you don't have a fillout account, again, there's a link in the description below. I already have the smart suite CRM set up. What this looks like here is I just have my client ID. This is an auto generated field, bringing in full name and auto number, I have a full name field. And this is actually just a text field type. It works nicer with fillout. I have an email phone and I have an address. So that's my clients list. And then I'll go over to documents and this is where we're going to store all of the documents. It's not actually limited to one type of document. The workflow would get a little bit more complicated if we wanted to include other documents, but it is doable. So again, document ID, auto-generated. I have a link here back to my clients. So that's just a linked record field type. I have a document type, and this is just a single select field. And what we are actually going to demonstrate is this general information form. We have a files and images field. This is like an attachments or documents field type where the PDF can be stored. And then for this use case, the way that we're going to go through it is we're actually going to store the email phone and then get the address if it's changed within this record as well. And then if there is changes, it can update this client record back here. There's a number of different ways to do it. And if you integrate other software and automation tools, like Relay or Make.com or Zapier, you could also accomplish a very similar workflow and it might actually be even a little bit cleaner. But this is how we're going to demonstrate it today. Based on the client list, this is where we're going to get the original information and pre-filled contact form. So what we're actually going to do is infill out. We're going to build out the form and then we can pre-fill some of the fields based off of a link. We'll store the link back in here and let's say you obtain this information every January, uh, you could set it up with your email platform to automatically send out the customized link to each individual content. I'll show you what I mean shortly here. Once you have your CRM or database or contact list, whatever set up, we can go over to fill out. Once you have an account, go up here, click new form, and I'm going to click next. I'm going to select this or another integration. We'll just choose the plain white style for now, and I will rename form general information date form. From here, a couple things that we need to do to start. As mentioned, we want to pre-fill some of this data. So the way we're going to pass the pre-fill to it is into the settings, and we're going to use the URL parameter. And I'm going to click this add new, and I'm just going to label this ID. We can click add parameter. And now we have that parameter set up and I will show you how to use that a little bit later within this video. Next thing we'll go over to this integrations tab. And this is where we're going to start our integration with SmartSuite. Click SmartSuite. You're going to connect to your account. I'm going to select my SmartSuite demos, go next, and I'm going to use the CRM that we're working within. It says here, select an app you want to sync form responses to. I want to pass that information to my documents table that is found here. I'll hit continue. It's going to be a create record. And this is where the prefetch records comes in. And this is where we're going to use that URL parameter that we just created. We're going to label this client and we can hit continue. 
and we're going to select a solution, which is a CRM. And we're actually going to pull in this information from the clients table. I'm going to select client ID, which is this field. And that is actually holding a record ID, a type of value. So we're going to go client ID is equal to the URL parameter ID. And we can test that fetch. It shows that it was successful. So I done and we are ready to go. One mistake I did notice that I made is back in this client prefetch. If we click into it here, I mentioned adding the client ID to be the filter. I actually want to go down here and select record ID. That's the field within our smart suite record that you can add by clicking this plus field. We'll go formula, we'll go advanced editor. You can rename this to record ID or whatever you want. And you just want to pass in that record ID function. And when you add it in, it will bring in the record ID as a field type here. That's the actual filter that we're going to be using. We want to filter by that record ID is equal to the URL parameter being the ID there. When we hit done, you'll go up there, click update, and then you should be good to go on. That. I can hit finish setup and I will scroll down to the bottom and this is where I'll generate a PDF. And then I'm going to drag and drop a PDF that I have already set up into this section here. So I'll drop it in, it'll upload and I can view it here. There's going to be a number of fields that I need to add, but for the time being, I'm just going to bring this in and drop it in kind of as a placeholder and I'll just click save. Now we need to go back out of this go to edit and we can start building our form. First thing I want to do, I'm going to bring this heading element and I can just call this general information form. I'm going to bring in a paragraph as well. And this is where I'm going to use some of that pre-filled information. So I'll just go client name, account number, and I will just write some text. Please complete the following form. And then I can go in here add in the at symbol and I can select this client. So this is using that fetch or the prefetch field that I had just discussed. We go into continue and then we can go down here to full. Same thing with the account number, add the at field, select client, and I will scroll down and I'm going to use the auto number as the account number. So we have that set up now and we can move into the actual form where they are going to be adding information. A few things I want to get is the phone number, the email address, and the address. And I do want to drop in one other thing here, which is going to be address change. I'm going to drag that above the actual address. I'm going to click over here, click standard, and I want to go into the layout and select wrap. So they're side by side, and we can change this to make it a little bit clearer. Has your address changed? in the last tax year. Go down to the address. We're going to add in some logic. We're going to do this show when, so it will be hidden otherwise. We'll add the condition to the question above. We'll click this page. Has your address changed in the last tax year is equal to yes. At that point in time, this field, the address field will display. If they answer no, it won't populate for them. A couple other things and go up here to phone. I will make this required and I'm not going to pre-fill it because I want them to enter their phone number each year, but the email address, because that is probably less likely to change, we can go in, click the at or the plus over there on the right side, and we can go client and we'll scroll down here and select the email. So what this is doing is based off of that fetch field, when the unique URL is selected by the client, open up this form and it will bring in their related information. It will go back, look at the clients and it will pull in the email address. There's a couple of other hidden fields that I want to add. So this link to clients and the document type, both of these will be hidden. So I'll just go over here to the logic and I'll do hide always. But one thing I want to do is add a default value in here. I'm going to do the at symbol. We're going to go with the URL parameters. I'm just going to pass in the ID there. Same thing with the document type. I'm going to go down to logic. We're going to do hide always. And I'm going to type in this general information form because that is the document that is specific 
to this URL. And then that way, when it gets submitted, the correct document type will be entered here. Two more fields I quickly want to add. I'll go into the other here and I'm going to bring in a signature field so that the people can sign and confirm that the information is accurate. And I'm going to bring in a date picker field. But within the date picker, I'm going to make it required. I'm going to go down here to default value, the at, I'm going to scroll down and there's this date utilities option. And then I'm just going to go in and select insert on today. Same with the signature. I'm going to go in and I'm going to make sure it is required. So based off of everything that we just entered, I can go up to publish and I can give it a test. I'm going to copy this link. I'm going to go back to our CRM. I'm going to right click it here. We're going to bring in a formula. I'll go to the advanced editor, bring in a catenate function with in quotes. I'm going to paste in that URL here, and then we're going to get rid of these X's and that's where we're going to pass in the actual record ID so on the outside of the quotes, we can add a comma, start typing record ID, and we can bring in the record ID function or in this case, I already have it added within the actual table so that I can bring it in as a field value. We can see here now that I've got a URL and then each ID is unique at the end. So those IDs are related back to these clients. Back within the smart suite connection here, if we scroll down to the bottom, click add new type, and we can do the files and images. So this is again found within the documents table. And then we're going to do this pick reference, scroll down to the bottom, go to the documents, and we're going to pass in that PDF that ends up getting generated based off of this form. We can click update, go back to edit. And now we should be good to go here. As I mentioned, we've had the signature and the date. These should all be good. We can click this edit PDF button. It's bringing in our PDF here and we can start assigning these fields to the correct location. The date, this one's really simple. We'll just go in here and we can either select the date from within the page, insert that, or we could have clicked this date utilities and then selected today. It's going to be the exact same thing. Bring that in there. I'm going to add a new field. This is going to be the client name. We'll do pick reference. We'll do in this case, it shouldn't change. So we'll go to the client and we'll bring in the full name there. Again, add a field and we're going to map each of these accordingly. This is going to be based off of that client prefetch record. We're going to use auto number and then we'll add a field. And this one is actually going to be based off of page. So we can select insert there and we can do that for the email address as well. Then we'll add another field. We're just going to display that as text. And the last field we're going to add is this address. We can go into here, page, and then select the address. You have the option to change the font size and the font color if you want. But other than that, we should be good to go. Scroll down to the signature. I'm going to change this formatting and size a little bit. Again, we'll select the page, go down to signature, insert that. And the last thing that we're going to bring in here is the selection. Go into page, select date, and insert that. Now all the fields display is blue, meaning in information will be passed in based off of the answers that our client provides. Then click save, click this exit button, and we should be good to go. We can give this a test here in a moment. We can click this ending, turn off the confetti. I'll delete this just leave that as thank you. And one thing we can do is just download PDF. Once the client has completed the form, they'll have the option to download that PDF if they want. So we can go up here to publish. Again, we've already copied that in. So we can check that here in the client section. And we can see there is the URL. If I select it, copy it, and open up a new window, paste it in, and hit enter, it's going to bring in the form. It's going to show me that it's assigned my name. That's using the prefetch. It's given me the account number. It's brought in my email address. I can type in my phone number here if I want. If I need to change my email address, I can. I'm going to leave it as is. 
has my address changed in the last tax year? If I select yes, then it will give me the option to enter my new address. If I select no, it's going to keep it hidden. Then I can click add signature. If I can sign, hit done, and it's brought in today's date accordingly. And I will hit submit. As I mentioned, it gives you this option to download the PDF if we want. I'm just going to close out of it. I'm going to go into the documents here and I can see that the new record was added. It's been linked to the client. It's telling me which document type it is. And if I select this button here, that is the actual PDF that was filled based off of form entry, signature, date. If I added an address, it would have added it there as well. That document has now been pleaded and it's brought in the information within the actual record. This is where we could create some automations or use make.com or relay to update the client information here. If this information is different than any of the information here, we could update those fields accordingly. That's it for this tutorial. If you liked it, please hit that subscribe button so you get more tutorials in the future.